Hi. In this video, I'm going to try to explain some of the things behind the idea of context. In Android Studio, you'll notice that context appears in many of your applications. So let's take a look at an example here of a button listener. So if I wanted to display a toast message, this comes from one of the examples in the tutorial list of the application series that I've made. So you can see in this line here that there is a toast, and it says we are going to produce uh, the answer to a joke, which uh, the answer is to get to the other side. So obviously the question was, what, why did the chicken cross the road? So anyway, the, uh, the toast message requires a parameter called a context. And you can see that I'm using the get application context command here. So what is this and why does it appear so often in many of the features of Android? So here's the situation. A context is often required to do basic things in Android. So getting resources or creating a new layout or any kind of a project. However, it's often a mystery to what is this thing called a context. Well, here's a definition you might say. It is a class. So context is a class, a Java class. And it provides a way for you to get information about your application environment. So when I use the word interface here, it means just a connection. So it's a way for your application to connect with other operating system features, other parts of your program. So I have maybe a, a mental working definition of what context is. So most of us would think of context in the way that we view our application. So there's one context in your app, and it holds many activities, and those activities have many views. And so saying that your context is your current application can help you understand what the purpose of context is and why we're trying to pass it around through different uh, parameters. What can you do with a context? Well, you're required to provide a context anytime you try to load a resource. So you want to get a color, an image, a string, a sound, any kind of asset that you've included in your app. You're going to require the context variable to get to it. You want to start a new activity? You're going to have to create an intent. An intent requires a parameter of a context because the context is really the root of your application, you might think. You want to create new views? You want to get a system service, you want to run the camera, you want to use the GPS location, you're going to probably need the context. So consider these methods. So we have get assets and get resources, get package manager, get a string, get shared preferences. What do all these have in common? These all belong to the application itself, so kind of a global view of your app. And if you want to get to these resources, you're going to use the context class to get there. So you have to provide the context in many of these calls. Let's take a look at a big tree here. So context, as you can see, is a class at the very top of the tree here, at least of this branch. So descending from context is uh, another class called a context wrapper and then a context theme wrapper. The important thing is to see that the activity class itself is really a descendant of context. And so every time you create a new activity, you're creating an instance of a descendant from context. Here's an example. So if you try to get a color from your application, you might know that there is a XML file that defines all the colors in your app. How do you get to those? Well, we use this method called getResources.getColor. And it magically goes into the XML file and looks up any custom colors that you've created. To get there, you're going to have to probably provide the context. So that way it knows uh, we're getting the XML file from our own application. There are several ways to, quote, get the context. So if you have to pass the context from one part of your program to another, you're going to use one of these four methods, likely. There's a method called get context, another one called get base context, get application context, or sometimes you can just use the word this. So 
So I'll show you some examples here of ways that you could use these commands. For example, let's go back to our simple button clicker. So we want to show a toast. So you can see here that the toast.makeText command has as its first parameter a context value. So in this case, I used mainActivity.this. And so that tells the, uh, the toast that, hey, I'm part of the main activity. And so it now knows where it starts from. Here's another way that works just as well. Toast.makeText, then you have get base context. Here's another. We could use get application context. And then finally, I have something that looks a little odd to you. Where did v come from? v.getContext. Well, you can see that v is an, an inherited or it's a pass through parameter. So it stands for view. So when you think view, think button. So the button that was clicked is the V. So v.getContext means, tell me the application that owns this button. And so v.getContext will tell you which app it belongs to. So those are four ways that you could program um, a reference to um, context. So I'm gonna switch back into uh, Android Studio for a moment. Let's take a look at these buttons here. So I have I have several jokes and buttons that are on here. If we wanted to go into the resources folder, you can see that there's a drawable folder and it has the icon launcher, the layout folder. We have uh, the values folder, which is probably irrelevant here. So let's go look at strings. So you can see that I have several strings that are saved in the XML file. So anytime I want to access these resources, anytime that the uh, strings or colors or whatever else has been used in your application, you have to tell the, um, the, the function to say, hey, go to my application resources, which means go to the context and then get the resources from there. So in conclusion, every time as a new programmer you see the word context, think of it as my application or the application class, the global class. The application contains resources, contains other activities, and it's the way for your application and your components in the application to know where they fit in the big hierarchy. So good luck with context. You're going to see a lot of it in future tutorials.